Democratic hopefuls Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will appear tonight at a televised town hall in New Hampshire. She won the our caucuses by four delegates, but he has not yet officially conceded. An average of recent New Hampshire polls give Sanders an 18-point lead. He and Clinton may debate one-on-one -on -one tomorrow night. Bernie Sanders is with us from his hometown of Burlington, Vermont. Senator, good morning. Great to be with you. How will you contest the results in Iowa? Well, look, uh, we lost apparently by two tenths of one percent. It looks like Hillary Clinton will have 22 national delegates, will have 20. There were six precincts where there was literally a coin toss uh, deciding who won. Uh, bottom line is we're moving on to New Hampshire right now, but we just want to make sure uh, that all of the information uh, is accurate. But what are your, oh, go ahead. No. Go ahead. So you are, are contesting or not? It's, I, let's not overstate it. We have at least 20 delegates. She has 22 delegates. We started off in Iowa 50 points behind. It appears that we lost by two tenths of 1%. We will be talking uh, to the Iowa State Democratic officials, but we are now focusing on New Hampshire, where we're working really, really hard uh, to try to win uh, that primary. Senator Sanders, a lot of people were very surprised in 2016 that a coin tossed even decides election, decides races this way. What are your <laughs> What are your thoughts about that? Do you have a better solution? Well, I love Iowa and I love the caucus <laughs> process. It really gets people deeply, deeply involved. But frankly, uh, as I understand it, there were six precincts uh, where a coin toss decided uh, who would get uh, delegates. Uh, I think we could probably do better, but. Uh, I, I think the folks at Iowa uh, have done a fantastic job in engaging people in that state in the real issues facing uh, the American people. Here is what Hillary Clinton said, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager said in a memo. The reality is that Sanders needed a decisive victory in Iowa in order to have a viable path to the nomination. They're saying that because you did not win in Iowa, where you had a constituency that should have been for you, uh, that you do not have a viable candidacy. Uh, is, is that what they say? They started off 50 points ahead. Uh, they started off as the anointed candidacy, and they ended up winning by two tenths of one percent. And they're worried about uh, my campaign. Look, uh, Charlie, the issues that we're talking about, which is a rigged economy where people are working longer hours for low wages, and almost all new income and wealth is going to the top one percent. We're talking about a corrupt campaign finance system where billionaires and super PACs are buying elections. Those are the issues that resonated in Iowa. They're resonating in New Hampshire. They're resonating all over this country. The American people, frankly, are tired of establishment politics, establishment economics. That's why we have the momentum. Senator, there's a lot of talk about that this race between you and Hillary Clinton is a battle for the heart of the Democratic Party and that it might be one between idealism and realism. That was the point that Bill Clinton made on the campaign stop yesterday. He said the reason that you have a following among youth voters is that because you offer emotionally, emotionally satisfying promises such as breaking up the big banks, taxing millionaires, giving free college and free health care. Is that what it is, emotionally satisfying promises? No, it, not at all. Look, uh, we are the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all of our people. We end up spending far more per capita. Uh, many other countries around this world uh, make sure that public colleges and universities are tuition free so that young people do not leave school fifty, a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Real unemployment is close to 10 percent. We need to create millions of decent paying jobs, rebuilding our infrastructure. And so, in terms of taxing the wealthy, let's be clear. Right now, we have massive income and wealth inequality. Almost all new income is going to the top 1%. Yeah, I do believe that the wealthiest people in this country and the largest corporations should start paying their fair share of taxes. So, Senator, you know the Washington Post said that you're running a fiction-filled campaign. Today, there is a report <laughs> right. from a nonpartisan budget watchdog group that your promise to give Medicare for all, health care for all, that you can't pay for it. Even your plan is not right. That in well, fact, that it falls three trillion dollars short no. of your campaign estimates. Listen, there are a lot of people looking at a lot of plans, and many of these so-called nonpartisan groups, you know, they have their axe to grind. Here is the truth. You tell me, why is it that in America we are spending almost three times more than the British 
who guarantee health care to all of their people. We're spending 50 percent more per capita than the French. I'm 50 miles away from Canada right now. They cover all of their people spending substantially less, and we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Every study, credible study that I have seen, says that a Medicare for all single payer program will guarantee health care to all of our people and save middle class people thousands of dollars a year on their health care bills. Thank you, Senator. Great to have you on the program. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much.